Hello everyone and welcome to the first five activities in Seesaw for grades pre-K through second grade. We are honored that you are here today with us learning a little bit more about how to get started with Seesaw with your students. So I'm Angela, I am with you here today and I taught kindergarten for 15 years. So getting to spend time with you all and in a similar grade level, I just love it. So I was in a classroom that had five iPads that we shared and we made Seesaw work wonderfully each day. So I now lead the community team here at Seesaw because I am very passionate about helping you get started. You can find me on Twitter at Mrs. Gadkey if you have questions that you wanna shoot my way. Also, I wanna let you know that this webinar is not I'm gonna walk through the step-by-step -step process of getting started with Seesaw. In order to get that, I hope you've watched Brand New to Seesaw Part One webinar. And if you haven't, if you're like, Angela, this is the first one I'm coming to, what do you mean? Um, when you get these slides, you can actually click on the link here and check out that webinar for your grade level. So definitely check that out. So today we are really focused on how do we get started with students? And the Seesaw Activity Library is going to be kind of your go-to tool to really support you as you get started with students using Seesaw. So I want to let you know, too, before we jump in, really jump in here, is if you used Seesaw last year and you haven't updated the app yet, the Seesaw app, make sure you check kind of wherever you need to on your device to make sure it's updated to at least Seesaw 6.0 and make sure all your student devices got updated to at least Seesaw 6.0 because that's where you're going to see all of these new features that we're talking about with activities and getting started with students. So make sure you check that. Now what I love is that the activity library is really going to save you a ton of time because we've done a lot of work for you about thinking through how to get started with students. These activities are ready for you to use instantly. It's going to save you a lot of time lugging home stacks and stacks of papers and binders and nine gazillion portfolios and you're really going to be able to collect student work in one handy dandy spot. So we are going to spend time today just quickly talking through how to get started and I'm pointing out this collection in the activity library because on the left you'll notice it's called Getting Started with Seesaw. And it's going to say Getting Started with Seesaw in whatever grade level you teach. So the class that I am going to show that this picture is for is first grade. But you'll notice above this tab, you can choose the grade level for it to change to. So if you're getting started with Seesaw in second grade, there's a collection for you. If you're getting started with Seesaw in you know, third grade or pre-K, there's a collection set up for you. So that's what we're actually going to spend time walking through and showing you today. Now, what's great about what's inside that collection is it has five activities. These are the first five activities you can use right away with your students to get started with Seesaw. So what's great about them in this first activity, it you know, this one showing here is just using the photo tool. And then in activity two, they're using the photo tool and then they're gonna use the mic to record their voice. And then the third activity, they're going to get to practice that again, take a photo, record their voice. And then in the fourth activity, so we're building on one tool at a time to really make sure your students are successful. So we're gonna go in right now and take a closer look at what this actually looks like in a class. So I have lots of Seesaw classes and the one I'm actually gonna jump into right now looks a little bit strange because it's one that we use for professional development for teachers. Um, you'll see that I'm signed in at the right as a teacher because it says teacher under the class name. Now, instead of student names, it just says, you know, A, B, C, D, um, instead of full student names. But of course, your class, when you're signed in as a teacher, would say student names. So in order to get to these first five activities that I think are gonna work great for your students, is when you're signed in as a teacher, you're just gonna tap this green add button and you are going to choose this first option, which is Browse Activity Library. 
And when I tap Browse Activity Library, it is taking me right into this library that has literally thousands of activities waiting for you. Now, all of these activities down below here have been added by Seesaw ambassadors and rock star teachers from around the world using Seesaw. Okay, so these are all things that you can use right away with your students. Now, some of you might think, but I, I just, just show me how to get started. Show me the five that I should do. Now, that's where you're going to find in this left right here, this getting started collection. Now, this one is set to kindergarten because that's what the class that I'm in right now, that's the grade level it's set to. I could change this easily and say second grade. If I change to second grade, you're going to see these are getting started with Seesaw activities in second grade. Same with pre-K, okay? So it's going to change based on what grade level you choose. So I'm gonna go into the kindergarten collection right now. Now, I know we have teachers at four or five different grade levels here today. Um, just note that when you go into the collection, these activities are really geared toward your students. So they're very similar in the sense that if you're teaching second grade, the first activity is still going to be showing what they know in math. It's just going to show a different picture that is more closely aligned with probably the content that you are teaching. So let's just go and tap into this first activity because I want to kind of show you some parts of it that um, are going to be useful as you get started with Seesaw. So first of all, if I tap into that activity and I want to use it with my students, I tap this heart. Tapping the heart means you're making, you like it, and you're making a copy of it to go into your My Library tab. That's like your own file, your own teacher file of activities. So when I see this activity, I also notice under the picture here, I have this great section that says Teacher Notes. We have typed in these instructions for you to really read. If you're brand new to Seesaw, read these teacher notes. They are kind of your tips to give you a little bit of like, why am I having my students do this? What is this activity gonna help them figure out how to do in Seesaw? So also they can play the instructions here, the students can, or you can listen to them as well. But let's show you how you share this with your students. So you're just gonna tap this gigantic green share button. And then I'm going to share this with my brand new pre-K-2 class. Okay, 26 students this is going to be shared with. Share with one class. If you're teaching multiple classes, you can go ahead and tag those and share it there. So I'm going to share it with that class. And then my students, when they go into Seesaw, they will just tap on the activities tab. And I'm going to go back into the class as a teacher to show you that. So they would tap this activities tab right here. And they're going to see that activity that I just shared. So it's right at the top, okay? <clears throat> now you're thinking, Angela, I work with little, little learners. How can they read all this stuff? They just need to know to touch the activity tab. And then they have these picture cues to kind of guide them. And even better, show what you learned in math. They can listen to the, the instructions as well. Now, as a teacher, if you're like, I don't want your voice, Angela, telling my students what to do, I wanna do that. I wanna be the one talking. You can actually, um, in Seesaw, you can change that to modify it to you as well. We'll talk about that in a second. But students would just tap, they're gonna see a big green add button right here and they would just respond. Now, again, I wanna say, awesome, they did that, they did great. I'm gonna go into activity two. I'm gonna tap the green add button as a teacher, browse the activity library, and this is, again, we're going to go to this Getting Started collection. So I'm going to tap right here. My students did awesome. They totally rocked taking a photo with Seesaw and adding it to their portfolio. Now we're going to try Activity 2, okay? Click on Activity 2. Oh, this is perfect. We're doing Writer's Workshop tomorrow. My students are going to do Writer's Workshop like they normally do in my classroom. But this time, when they finish, I'm going to have them use Seesaw. They're going to take a photo of their writing, and they're going to learn to use the mic. They're going to tap that mic button in Seesaw and talk and tell me their story. I love this activity. I'm going to tap the heart. It is shared to my lot, my library tab. So I'm going to click there just to show you. So I just tap the heart. Do you see? There's that activity waiting for me in my, my library. Now, again, to share it with my students, I can tap this activity, tap share, tap it to my brand new student, my brand new class, and they have it. Okay. I'm going to go back to my class, my Seesaw class, and again, there's the activity waiting for my students in the activities tab. 
So if I go to the green add button as a teacher, you're probably pros at this already, browse activity library. We're going into getting started with CESA in kindergarten and I can go to activity three. Now I'm not gonna go through each one of these activities because you get the idea, right? You're gonna go through these five activities with your students so they can independently use Seesaw and get rocking and rolling. But I wanna show you what I just talked about if you wanna modify one of these activities. So if I say, I wanna do this get to know you activity, right? My little uh, friends are gonna be drawing a self portrait. Maybe you're teaching second grade and they're still drawing a self portrait because they're doing something with goal setting. Okay, but you want to change this. So I'm going to first tap the heart to save it to my library. Now that has taken a copy from the Seesaw library. And now what I want to do is I'm going to open this activity. And at the bottom right, I see these three dots. I'm going to tap there and I'm actually going to copy and edit this activity because I know I have Seesaw's copy in my library tab, but I actually want to change something here. So now I get to, I can edit and change all of this, okay? Maybe I don't wanna say activity three. Maybe I wanna take that off, I'm gonna delete it. Maybe I want my own voice recording. So I'm gonna tap the X right here. I'm gonna delete that recording and I'm gonna add my own voice instructions. So my students hear my voice giving the directions, okay? I could change the image, whatever you wanna do. So now when I'm done, I'm just gonna tap save. So I've modified it however I want. And now you'll see, aha, it says Angela Cesar. Okay, that's me. I've modified this activity if I wanted to, and I can share it with my students. Okay, so if I go back to the Seesaw Activity Library, again, all of these first five activities are right here waiting for you. So my recommendation is if you are brand new to Seesaw with your students, this is a great place to start. This is kind of going to be the things to start with to show them step by step, one by one, how to get started with Seesaw in your classroom. So I also wanna point out a couple things. If I go to the Seesaw Activity Library, there's a lot of things we didn't talk about here today. There are back to school favorites for your grade level. So maybe let's go to second grade, okay? Back to school's favorites in second grade. So if I tap on that, Whoa, there's all sorts of activities I could look at. If you find something you really love, use it, share it. They would love, you know, that's why this is here. Our community really wants to support you getting started. Maybe you are teaching pre-K, okay? So I'm changing to pre-K and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I only have three iPads. Click on activities for shared devices. Maybe you wanna explore that a little bit later um, in the year, okay? If, you're, if you've already mastered, if your students have whipped through these activities here, maybe you wanna check those out. You can also browse by different subjects. You can type in here and search different activities, but you can go ahead and tap hearts on all of any, any and all activities that you want to save and then share with your own students. So we went just really quickly here today through your first five activities with Seesaw. So we're gonna stop in just a moment, but I wanna let you know that there is a survey that's gonna pop up after this webinar. And we would love to have your feedback. Let us know what we can do better. Let us know what you want to see the next time you come to a webinar. Make sure just to take 30 seconds and fill that out. It really, really helps us out. Um, and as always, make sure you connect with our community. We have, the most amazing teacher community, I feel like on the planet with Seesaw. So make sure you connect and ask questions. Um, of course, you found this webinar probably at web.seesaw.me backslash PDS. Um, it's a great place to go if you wanna join us again for live webinars. And if you missed webinars, we have all of them on our YouTube channel, so check that out as well. And if you don't know about our website, help dot seesaw dot me and you are brand new to seesaw you got to get there there's all sorts of goodies there all sorts of fun printables that you can use in your classroom as you're getting started so check that out as well